Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP. Today I'm going to start an experiment with dry boxes and vacuum sealed bags. Today I'm starting an experiment looking at my dry boxes for filament. And then I bought these cheap vacuum sealed bags from Tronxy. And I'm hoping to compare the two and see which one keeps my filament dry and keeps it so I can use it. So let's go ahead and get started. For my permanent dry boxes, I use these Wild One serial storage container sets and some 3D print parts. And if you're interested in making your own, I'll link to a video up top that I've done previously so you can take a look. The dry bags I'm using are from Tronxy and they're a set of 10. Currently they're on sale for just about $10, which equals about a dollar a bag. So that's again pretty cheap. And comparing that over to the dry boxes, you'll see the dry boxes are about $25 a piece or $25 for five. So they're about $5 a piece. Once I add in uh, everything, it's probably about $6. And the bags, again, are about $2 once I add in the desiccant as well as these little sensors I use. So here's the sensors I use, and they come in pa packs of a couple. I'll have to look up how many, but I'll, I'll put links in the video description. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take three bags, put three rolls of filament in it, five packages of desiccant, and one of my sensors. And then I'll do three of my permanent storage boxes put in five packets of desiccant, as well as a sensor. Let them sit for a week, and then after a week, I'll report back which ones did the better job. So as you can see, I keep my desiccant in a sealed container. So I have a roll of filament that's been sitting out. I'm going to take my bag number one. Place the filament in the bag. I'm going to place the sensor here in the center. And then let's do this. Let's go ahead. So I place my filament in the bag, taking five desiccants. And I'll put that right here in the center. Or better yet, I'll put it out here on the outside. I'm going to put the sensor in the middle. And then I'll seal the back and pump out the air. So I've sealed it. And then let's put our little pump here against the hole. So now I've sealed my filament up and I'm just gonna put that aside for a week and then we'll check back next week how that does. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill up the other two bags with filament and then we'll put those aside and then I'll go ahead and do my dry box. So this is dry box number one. I put the sensor in the front here. I have my roller in there if I wanna feed the filament out of the box. This gasket here is closed on the inside, that's sealed. And then I have it sealed on top here as well. And I'll put links to these models in the video description. So same process I did previously. I'm just going to take my filament, drop it in here, and I'm gonna go ahead and put in five desiccants. So I put in five desiccants, and then seal it up. And I'll let this sit for a week, and then we'll see what the humidity looks like and see how they help. I've put all the bags the dry boxes up. They're sitting here in my office, so I'll let them sit for a week and then I'll open them up and we'll see what they look like next week. And hopefully we'll see that there's a difference between the dry box or the vacuum bags, or if not, maybe I need to buy more vacuum bags. One week later. Back a week later and I've reviewing the results 
of doing the vacuum bags and the boxes and it's sort of interesting. So let me go over and show you my spreadsheets I put together and you can decide for yourself which ones are better. As you can see, the dry boxes actually reduced humidity with filament significantly more than the bags did. Now I had one bag that did a pretty good job and I, I'll, I'll show you in a minute what I think the issue there is. But the, the dry box, again, were much better than the vacuum bags. Now let's take a look at the bags real quick so I can explain what I think is going on. I have these two bags. Uh, this is bag number two. This one, um, as you can see, it's about 36%. It's significantly less than this one showing 45%. Now I think what's happened is I have a better vacuum in here and the uh, silicon can't do a, as good a job circulating the air in this one. Now this one doesn't appear that the seal really held where I didn't pump it enough. So I left enough air in there where it could actually dry the air and the sensor could detect it. So again, there's probably enough room for air to move around and actually get to the sensor where maybe here, not so much, because uh, this one had a better seal. What this leads me to believe is I probably need to try to get some heavy duty, really big sealable bags and then just see what the difference is if I just throw desiccant in there, don't even bother with vacuuming them and see what the difference is with humidity. If I had to guess going back over to my spreadsheet, what I find is the bags were almost as good as the dry boxes. So hopefully this has helped you figure out uh, which method you want to do to try to dry your filament and keep your filament dry. Right now I'm sticking with my dry boxes, but I probably will investigate getting some bigger bags and just try putting the filament in the bags and add some desiccant. But I hope that helps you save some money or, or make some decisions and keep your filament in good condition so you get better prints. Uh, hopefully you found this helpful. If you like what I'm doing, subscribe, give me a like, and feel free to share. I hope to talk to you next time. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to reach out. Look forward to talking to you again. Have a great day. Bye.